What's going on guys, it's Clutch Hoops here, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite prospects in this year's draft, Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin is one of the best prospects in this year's draft, but many draft analysts and websites are steering away from him as of right now. For example, Tankathon has him as the 9th best prospect, ESPN has him as the 11th best prospect, and worst of all, Bleacher Report has him as the 3rd best power forward, which is absolutely laughable. All these websites are sleeping on him heavily, but there are a couple people who have done the research and have him ranked in the top 5, which is where he should be. This season at Dayton, Obi has led his squad to a 21-2 record and the 6th ranked team in the nation. In 31 minutes per game, Obi is averaging 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists on 62% from the field and 35% from 3 point range. These numbers are incredible for a sophomore, but yet again some people are saying that he shouldn't even be a lottery pick. In this video, we're going to be talking about Obi Toppin's biggest strengths and weaknesses, as well as an overall projection with an NBA comparison at the end. Hopefully this can help you guys understand how good Obi Toppin is as a prospect and a player as a whole. So with that said, let's hop right into the video. Obi Toppin's strengths. To begin, Obi Toppin is one of the most explosive players in the entire draft class, especially on the offensive class. He is only 6'9 with a 6'11 wingspan, but since he has incredibly big hands and explosive jumping abilities, you would think he has a 7'2 wingspan. During games, Obi is a problem on the offensive boards and is always a lob threat when around the rim. His hops are also very useful on the defensive side of the ball as he averages 1.5 blocks per game. In the NBA, this will allow him to play the 5 in small ball lineup since the team is on will still be able to protect the rim. Furthermore, his explosiveness is most evident when around the basket in the post because he is able to use his length and hops to fluster defenders and get easy layups. If this is a bit confusing, it's basically what Zion Williamson does with his strength where he will literally jump into defenders when contested at the rim. Since Obi doesn't have the same strength as Zion, Obi uses his explosiveness and quickness in the post to create positions that defenders find awkward, which usually lead to an easy layup or free throws. However, this does work against taller and stronger defenders, but it is most effective against smaller defenders when he gets a mismatch or he is nearly unstoppable. This will translate to the NBA very well because the NBA switches on pretty much everything and if Obi can get a slightly smaller defender or a slightly weaker defender than him, he will make them pay. To continue, Obi is also incredible from 3 point range as he shoots 35% this season. You may think that this is pretty good for a power forward, but last year he shot the ball at over 50% at 52% to be exact. His 3 point form is very mechanically sound and consistent each time he shoots it. On top of this, his shot translates to the NBA very well because he already has decent range, but more importantly his catch and shoot release is pretty quick for a player at his position. There should be no issue with the shot at the next level and it will be one of his biggest strengths. The importance of a shot for a guy like Obi is significant because this will open up the pick and roll game to new levels. Obi is not a soft power forward and wants to make contact, so he sets strong screens and hits defenders. This allows him to be great in the pick and roll game as he can pop out to the 3 point line or roll to the rim. The NBA revolves around the pick and roll which Obi has all the intangibles necessary to strive. Obi's passing abilities are great for a big man as he can get rid of the ball when he experiences double teams and when driving he knows where his teammates are. One of my favorite things about his game is the effort he plays with especially running the court in transition. He's one of the fastest players once he gets going and if he consistently runs in transition at the next level, he will get so many easy layups and lob opportunities. Finally, Obi has a very well developed post game where he has a very successful spin move in a hook shot that is especially effective against smaller defenders. Obi can score on the inside and out which makes him one of the most tantalizing prospects in the entire draft. Even though he is such a well put together prospect, there are still some things that scouts are wary of. The weaknesses. Obi Toppin is a sophomore at Dayton, but he is 21 years old right now and turns 22 at the beginning of March. Yes, other prospects like DeAndre Hunter and Cam Johnson were also older players in the draft last year and still drafted in the first round. However, some people are still hesitant to think that his play will translate to the next level based off of his age and experience in college basketball. Personally, I don't really agree with these accusations because his game translates very well to the next level, but obviously it would be a lot better if he was 18 or 19 years old. To continue, Obi is not the most gifted on the defensive end when he has to move laterally and stick with guards on the perimeter. He is very flat footed or heavy footed and lacks elite foot speed which will make guarding top level guards on switches in the NBA very difficult. 
It's hard to say how much he will be guarding more shifty guards at the next level, but the real question is if he will be able to make up for the lack of speed on the perimeter with his explosive hops and shot blocking ability. That's honestly something we'll find out at the next level, but right now it looks to be a no. His posture is a bit weird on the defensive side of the ball, so with good coaching that could be an easy fix. On top of this, Obi is not the best at driving to the basket. He can facilitate relatively well with his left hand, but as of right now he's not all that comfortable attacking off the dribble. There are definitely times where he is able to, however this is when he is able to use his speed and explosiveness to get to the rim. Finally, on the defensive boards, he can get pushed around at times by bigger centers as he only weighs 220 pounds. He has tall shoulders and a body type that should fill out once in the NBA, so he will be able to adapt better to the NBA physicality. One other weakness that a lot of scouts said that is kind of absurd is that he lacks the ability to pull up from 3 point range off the dribble. He isn't the type of player who will shake and bake, so this weakness is kind of like the same thing as saying Trey Young lacks a post up game. The scouts tend to be much harder on him. Overall, Obi Toppin may have the highest floor in the entire draft with a pretty good possibility of becoming a franchise cornerstone. His game reflects the new age of the NBA with the pick and roll and three point shooting, so it's hard to comprehend why people still believe that he shouldn't even be in the draft lottery. Some players that Obi Toppin resembles is John Collins in a better shooter, stronger, and more explosive version of Drew Gooden. John Collins averaged 20 points and 9 rebounds in his sophomore year in college, and his game is very similar to Obi's in the fact that he can shoot and crash the boards with authority. They are both 6'9 with 6'11 wingspans, shoot the three very well, and are shot blockers. Obi is going to continue to rise in stock as more people see how good he is, so expect his name to be talked about a lot in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and now have a much better understanding of Obi Toppin. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, but I'm out and PEACE!